Charlie's aunt, Oxford, 1892, Act 1. Jack discovered seating at writing table, unlit pipe in mouth, struggling wildly to write a letter. He looks at the letter and tears it up. Jack Chesney, tall, good-looking, about 22, wears light-coloured lounge suit and college tie, the under pink and white diagonal stripes. He laughs his way through life, is self-confident, quick, alert and must-have drive, as he sets the pace of the play. I can't! I can't get into the vein! Flings down oh, pen. I don't know what to say. Don't know how to begin. I've spoken to her at the dance the other evening. Please, that we're all going away for the summer. Instead, I've gone and left everything to the very last bit and I've raked it to the non pleasant By George. Hmm. A dozen different ways and sends the one I think looks the best. Goes back to the table and sits, takes up pen. So come on, Jack. Here we are, in love with the dearest girl on earth. Tackle her like a man. Tell her so, or they'll be off north, you'll be gone down, and I've lost your chance forever. She's my fate, and I'm hanged if I shan't be hers. Oh, so, here Writing. goes. My Stops. darling. Rather strong, perhaps. Tears up paper, places on left of writing table, begins again. My dear Miss Verdun. Stops again. No, too formal, not a bit what I really feel. Tears that up. My dear... Hang it, why not? Writes boldly. My dear Kitty. That's grand. Brassett enters quietly, door left is table centre. Brassett, college scout, manservant between 40 and 50 years of age, wears dark trousers and short grey alpaca coat, white collar and dark tie. He's always polite and never familiar in, in his manner. Now I can go ahead like a house on fire. Looking proudly at letter. My dear Kitty, I... I beg pardon, sir, but would you mind? Yes, very much. Go away, I'm busy. Y yes, sir, but... I'm busy with the most important affair. Get out! Brassett, raising book or two off table and hesitating. Yes, sir. Just as I'd made such a good start, too. At letter again. My dear Kitty... Brassett calmly drops book back down to table. What are you doing, <laughs> Brassett? Confound it all, what do you want? I merely wish to say, sir, that I have laid out a few things which... All right, thank you. Get out and leave me alone. Which I thought you wouldn't care to. Take them, keep them, take every blessed rag I've got, only go away! Brassett goes to the door. At letter again savagely. My dear Kitty! Beg pardon, sir? Confound it, I wasn't addressing you! Go away! Exit Brassett quickly. Enter Charlie with letter. Comes C. Ch Ch Charles Widecombe, is about 20, good-looking, medium height, fair, Saxon type, charming, and though shy is not awkward. Rowing type, wears white flannels, blazer and muffler, cheap watch and breast pocket of blazer with short chain hanging out. A later entrance with telegram has changed blazer for a lounge suit coat. Removed muffler and wears a collar and tie. My dear Kitty. I say Jack, <laughs> throwing down pen and jumping up savagely. If you don't clear out, press it out. Oh, oh it's, it's you, Charlie. What is it, old chap? Oh, nothing, Jack. I, I don't interrupt you if you're busy. It's all right, Charlie. Don't go. No, what's he doing? That fool, press it. Only bagging all my clothes. I'm going to. A letter. <laughs> It's best to keep. How far have you got? To beat. And Len words failed me, and I've come to you for advice. You always know what to say and do. Oh, do I? Yes, you know my idiotic complaint. I'm shy. You're not. Aren't I? So prescribe for me, old chap. What am I to say? Turning away left, sits right corner of table centre. A good idea. I'll prescribe for him and take the medicine myself. Now then, let's see. You're in love with Amy Spettigue, and you mm -hmm. want to know if there's any hope for you, and if so... You see, they're all off to Scotland tomorrow. Yes, I know, and you want to see her at once. When and where? Fair await. Do I diagnose the case <laughs> accurately? <laughs> oh, to a T, old chap. Very well, then. You want to say something to this effect? Writing. My dear Kitty... He stops dead. No, Charlie, no, not going to him. Writing table set, right centre. No, not Kitty. Amy. 
Oh, of course. What am I thinking of? He tears up the paper, oh. takes a fresh sheet. My dearest Amy, forgive me, darling, for thus addressing you, but I love you so deeply. Underline. Uh, rather strong, Jack. <laughs> Shut up! So earnestly. Also, underline okay. you so. All I ask is... But th th there's one obstacle to my putting it quite as straight as that, much as I'd like to. What's that? Well, um, <laughs> I've an aunt. My dear Charlie, most of us have. What about her? Yeah, well, I feel I ought to tell her first. Oh, if you're going to drag an aunt into the business, we may as well wait till they all come back from Scotland. Why? You know what auntie is when she steps in. No, I don't. That's just it. I don't know her. I've never even seen her. Well, we won't be too hard on that aunt. She hasn't interfered much in your affairs up till now. Well, except to find out that I was an orphan and have me sent to Eton and to Oxford. And now my guardian writes to me that she's coming here this morning by an early train and will take luncheon with me at one o'clock. And you've never seen her? No. She went to Brazil before I was born and became a sort of secretary to a very rich old Brazilian chap out there called Dom Pedro Galvadores. And now, by the merest accident in the world, I've seen this. Give Jack the paper. Uh, <laughs> Madam, or rather, Dona Lucia Galvadores, the Brazilian millionaire who has taken Lord Toppleby's magnificent mansion in Belgravia, is an English woman of genial disposition and a financial genius. Indeed, it was her capacity in this direction that earned the gratitude of her late husband and led to a romantic deathbed marriage. Whew, well, I don't now see much on, in that. Go on, Jack, read the next. Her only relation is a nephew at Oxford. Lucky nephew. That's me. Oh, by George, Charlie, this is a startler. And she may be here any minute. Oh, I've met all the trains up to now. I wish she'd have come some other day. She'll arrive by the next, uh, just in time for lunch. Yes, it's a bore. I wanted to write that letter to Amy. Oh, I don't so much know so much about that. But it's awfully difficult. It's an awfully difficult letter to write. Fearfully complicated. Well, you Why? see, I've no people or anything. No people. But I've no reason like to that. expect anything from her. More than she's already done for me, which, of course, I'm very grateful and all that. But I want to see Amy and put it to her that if... Charlie, I've got a clinking good oh, idea. Jack, you are a good chap. Write it down and I'll copy it out. No, no, not for you, for me. Oh. And for us both. Oh. You're gone on Amy. I'm in love with Kitty. Really, Jack? Oh, madly. Worse than anything I ever took up. Even cricket. I was writing oh. to tell her so when you came in. There's a the letter. Oh, I'm so glad. And what's your idea? Hang letter writing. We'll give a luncheon party for your aunt, or your aunt, a tea afterwards in the garden. In the garden? Yes, I'll get leave. <sighs> but, I'm, but my rooms are so small. Never mind, I'll lend you mine. Oh. Rasset shall see to it. Mm -hmm. Rasset! Now, come on, first we'll ask the girls. Ask the girls? To meet your aunt. But what about old Spettigue? Blow old Spettigue. Oh, oh, I forgot. He's up in town for a few days on business. He sits at so the writing much, desk. So much the better. Brush it! I bet! Do, do you really think they'll come? Oh, they'll jump at it. And what makes you think so? Well, what do you think? Why, Jack, you know I rather agree with you. We'll send a note at once. You write it. Go ahead. Charlie <laughs> writes the dictation. My dear Miss Spettigue. Brush it! Where are you? Brush it comes down left of Jack. Where are you? He turns to see Brassett standing left. Go! Uh, 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 Brassett, uh, get some... Yes, sir. To Mr. Spetty. He exits. Yes, Jack, I've got that. Would you and Miss Verdun do me the, the honour honor. to lunch with me and Mr. Chesney? Mr. Chesney? I'll address the envelope. I'll address the envelope. No, not that, you muff! Oh, sorry. At his rooms. <laughs> St. Old's College, today at one o'clock. He addresses the envelope. Miss Spetsigu. Miss. Just <laughs> look out to meet my aunt. Uh, what did you say her name was, Charlie? Uh, Donna Lucia de Alvadorez. Donna. All right, stick it down. Uh, yes. An answer by bearer will greatly oblige. Yours sincerely, Charles Wycombe. Oh, splendid, Jack. You're a genius. It's a glorious opportunity. They're <laughs> off to Scotland. And we're off down. 
And now we shall have them all to ourselves. Oh, good. Re-enter Brasset. The messenger, sir. Give him that and tell him to look sharp. Yes, sir. Going left. At door, quick glance at address on envelope, smiles and exits. This sort of thing is not to be settled by correspondence. Mm. He tears up letters, gives fragment, fragments to Charlie, who puts them in pa into the paper basket. No, and we shall have them all to ourselves. <laughs> yes, and we couldn't have asked them if it hadn't been for your aunt. I'm beginning to love that dear old lady already. Brasset! <laughs> Re-enter Brasset. Yes, sir. Lunch for five. For how many, sir? For five. For five, sir. <laughs> Charlie rises and goes over to them. Well, what are you <laughs> laughing at? Well, sir, I'm afraid our credit in the kitchen is somewhat exhausted. <laughs> oh, is it? How are you off for tick, Charlie? Well, Jack, I'm, af I'm afraid my guardian's rather... Uh, oh, yeah, is he? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, Brassett, get it outside. Go to Bunters. Uh, I'm afraid, sir, we owe Bunters. Oh, do we? Um, Charlie, you don't mind... Uh, it'll be alright when my cheque comes. <laughs> Here you are, Brassie, do the best you can with that. He takes the watch and looks at it critically. This is no good, sir. I couldn't get anything on this, sir. He hands it back to Jack. However, sir, I've no doubt it will be all right at Bunter's if I say it's for me. Goes behind table centre. Charlie goes to, to the chair left of writing table and sits. <laughs> oh, all right, Brassie. Lunch for five at one o'clock. Brassie looks at his own gold watch. Rather short notice, sir. He takes books off the centre table and puts them on the sideboard left. All right, long pay. Go where you like, do what you like, only lunch for five at one. He puts the watch and chain right, in his Charlie. own waistcoat pocket. I say, Jack, that's my watch. I beg your pardon, old chap, <laughs> my mistake. What wine, sir? A champagne. Very little left, sir. Half a dozen bottles. No, sir, I think not. He gets out four from the sideboard cupboard. Only four, sir. Uh, quite enough. <laughs> Six, I'll swear. Pardon me, sir, only four of champagne. And I think, taking out bottle of open claret, yes, one of claret. Oh, hang that claret. Russet puts it's it on the sideboard. A, it's been open a month. All right. He sneaks those other two bottles. He's a corker. Oh, my fellow is just the same. Jack gives a ferocious glance at Brasset, who returns it imperturbably. They all are. Brasset now, exits. While you and your dear old aunt are looking at the chapel and the cloisters, Kitty and I can have our little talk. Well, yes, Jack, that's all very well. But what about Amy and me and our little talk? She'll be in our way horribly. Oh, I never thought of that. She's all very well as an excuse to get the girls to come here, but by herself she'll be an awful bore. She'll be worse than that. She'll be a brute of a nuisance. Hmm. What shall we do? Well, Napoleon went over the Alps on horseback, and I've been under them by train, so there must be a way out of this. Yes, but how? Can we ask someone to meet her? Yes, someone we can depend upon. We enter Brasset, who busies himself at the sideboard. Yes, but who? What about Brasset? He's a pompous mm. sort of chap and as artful as a corkscrew. Can't we turn him into a don or something for the day? Yes, that's a good idea, Jack, but... No, won't do. We shall want him to wait at the table. Uh, oh, of course so we shall. Oh, he's such a cynical chap. Rusted exits through recess up left. Besides, he'd neglect yes, our Yes, and he'd want to make love to our girls. By George, I've got it. Babs, Fanny Babs, we'll ask him. Oh, yes, why didn't we think of him before? You keep her in a rattling good humour. Oh, splendid. Brassic! Brassic re-enters, coming down left centre. Yes, sir. Go to Lord Fancourt Bamberley's rooms, give him my compliments, and ask him to come here at once. Yes, sir. Goes uh, to the so, left. Say, say it is very, very important. important. Yes, very important. Yes, yes I, sir. I agree. Exits. And very immediate. Yes, sir. And while Babs is doing gooseberry with your aunt, we can have our chat with the girls. Oh, by the by, Jack. 
Talking of Babs' cheerfulness, have you noticed something about him lately, ever since he was so ill and had to go off to the Mediterranean? I've noticed he's been jolly hard up. I fancy, from a few hints he's dropped to me, that he's a bit hard up himself. What? Babs in love? Yes, and if I'm not much mistaken, he's as soft-hearted over a girl as... We are. Yes. All the better. You'll feel for us. You'll see the necessity, then, of keeping the old lady well out of the way. Oh, by George, Jack, he'll be Prime Minister one of these days. We enter Brasset. His Lordship's compliments, sir, and he says he can't come. He has a luncheon party, and could you lend him a few bottles of champagne? Lend him a few bottles of champagne? Well, all my cheek. Uh, who's he got coming? Oh, Freddie Peel and a lot of idiots like himself, I expect, oh, and they'll be howling comic songs all the afternoon. Oh, yes, it'll sound awfully bad, won't it? He mustn't. Here, Rasset, lay for six. Yes, sir. What shall we do? Come on, we'll go to him. We must make him come. He can't upset all our plans in this selfish way. Mm. Put that champagne on ice, Rasset, and tidy up my room. Come on, Charlie, come on. Coming. Exit Charlie, propelled by Jack. One o'clock. He looks helplessly at his watch. Put room in order. First, always the way I... Opens windows wider, picks up book from window seat. Hurry, scurry, no time for anything. They come with a bang, they go with a bang, everything with a bang, except pay their bills with a bang. Well, I did think that little prerequisite was safe. Upon my word, I did. I... Exit. Jack! Jack, I say, old man! Lord Fancourt Babley. He's small, about five foot three to five foot six at most. Good looking, humorous face, smartly dressed in light grey peppercorn suit with waistcoat and black elastic sided boots. He only removes his coat when he gets into his aunt's dress. Lord Fancourt Babley appears at window, upright centre, carrying large Gladstone bag. Where the tickets are you? I wanted to borrow some fizz. Where do they keep it? Turns and sees champagne on centre table. Hello? By George, the very thing! He puts the bag on the table and opens it, starting up the first bottle with a mantic sir from chair right centre. Serves him right. He shouldn't leave it about. Puts first bottle in bag. In this ostentatious way. Puts second bottle in bag, wrapping third bottle with another anti macassar or scarf from chair left centre. Especially when I'm so beastly hard up. Puts third bottle in bag. Would they be jolly waxy? Puts fourth bottle in bag and closing bag. That's the ball of peace, and they must make out with whiskey and soda. Enter Jack and Charlie. They meet Lord Fancourt at the door and bring him back to centre. Charlie left of him, Jack right of him. Hello, Babs. Takes bag from Lord Fancourt, so puts it on centre table. We've been talking about you. No, really? I, I say, how do you think I'm looking? Splendid, old chap. Yes, I thought you would be pleased with me. Well, Charlie stops him at the door. They bring him back as before. Jack takes the bag from Lord Van Court and puts it on the table centre. Oh, go, Babs. You wanted to see us, didn't you? All three down centre as before. Oh, yes. I wanted to borrow some fizz, but... Sorry, uh, I can't. I could have spared you a couple of bottles, but that fool brass it. Oh, I know. My fellow's just the same. There's no reasoning with them, is there? Well, uh. Makes a feint to bolt. Jack and Charlie miss him and land on centre table over bag. Lord Fancourt grins. I looked you up last night, Babs, but you were out. Yes, uh, you know Freddie Peel, don't you? He's an awful idiot. Hasn't a particle of brains, has he? I'm all right. He gave a charge party last night and I won a hundred pounds from him. You should have seen this face. It makes me laugh now. Why, Freddie Peel hasn't sixpence. No, really? Did he pay you? No, but he's, he's going to when his grandmother dies. Oh, the old lady's been dead years. No, really? Oh, that's beastly, you know. I'm stumped and he's had an awful lot out of me. Oh, but he's an awful idiot. Hasn't a particle of brains, has he? But I'm all right. Picks up possible. Attempts to bolt towards window. Jack intercepts and brings him back to the table as before. Jack puts the bag on the table. I say, Babs, we want you to stay and lunch with us today. Mm -hmm. I say, you chaps, don't let the kiddie go. I've got to meet my tutor. Babs, you mustn't work like this. You're looking quite pulled down. Mm -hmm. Am I really? 
I was only telling Jack so just now. Do you think I shall die? Not you. You don't want to worry over all this study. You'll be a great man of one sort or the other, one of these days, without all that. Well, that's what I think, you know. Uh, but I ought to do something. We've had a wonderful lot of jollies in our family. Great jollies in the army and navy and things. Uh, they never killed themselves with study. No, uh, but I must do something. Of course, Babs, of course, you must stay to lunch. Charlie's aunt is going to pay him a visit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what fun! I know Charlie visits his uncle sometimes when he's hard up. <laughs> oh. So it's only right his aunt should return the visit. All laugh, pushing oh. Lord Fancourt to and fro. Charlie regains his watch. Now oh, that's just the sort of thing we want. A jolly smart chap like you with a fund of humour and a lot of brilliant conversation. <laughs> yes, Babs, that's it. To interest and amuse a charming what? lady. Who is she? Why, Charlie's What's aunt. she like? Well, you see, Babs, we don't quite know. I'm to see her today for the first time. I say, Charlie, she might turn out to be some awful old crock. She's a widow and a millionaire. That's enough, isn't it? Rather. Uh, put me down for a chance, Charlie. I'll take a chance. We didn't care to ask Freddie Peel, did we, Charlie? Uh, no. No. No, he's an awful idiot. I say, what's her name? Um, Donna Lucia Dalvadorez. Oh, damn, what a name! Sees his bag again and bolts the door left. Charlie and Jack bring him back right centre, turn him round and run him up to the table centre on which he falls face downwards, putting bag on. Putting the bag on the table. Jack brings him down centre again. Look here, Babs. It's no use. You must stay to lunch. You'll find Charlie's aunt a charming old lady. Charming old lady. I say, look here, haven't you got anything younger coming? Oh, yes. Two other ladies. Nice. Young? Yes. Ah, that's more in my line. How many did you say? Two. Oh, I see. One for each of you and the old prop for me. No, thanks. I'm off. Now, listen, Babs, this is an awfully serious affair. I should think so, with an old crock like that. And we want your help as a friend. Yes, Babs, a friend we can trust, eh? Brother. We'll take you into our confidence. No humbug, straight as a die. We're in love. What? Charlie as well, you silly ass! No fool of a flirtation business, but the real downright serious thing. And, Babs, if you knew the girls as well as we do, you wouldn't wonder at it. And they're coming here to lunch today. I say, have you proposed? No, that's just it. Ah, uh, I see. You want me to propose for you? No, we'll do that for ourselves. That's why we've asked them to come. You know, Babs, you don't understand our feelings a bit. Oh, don't I, though? I say... Have you noticed how sad I've been recently? Yes. What is it? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm in love too. And what makes you think that? I've always wanted to be alone and hear the birds sing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so fond of poetry, I can't <laughs> sleep. I took a drink for a couple of days, but it made me ill for a week, so I left it off. <laughs> You've got all the symptoms. Yes, uh, sit down and tell us all about it. <laughs> you remember when I was ploughed? <laughs> Beastly shame. No, not the last time. The term before. I, I was awfully ill and I took the yacht down to the Mediterranean and at Monte Carlo and came across an English officer named Delahaye. Quite penniless and dying, you know. Jack, he tried to commit suicide. Bad luck at the tables, eh? Yes, he'd beg it himself, and his only child, the sweetest little girl you ever saw, Jack, and to amuse him and keep his spirits up, I used to play cards with him. And what, and what became, became of him? They died, poor fellow. And what became of her, the sweetest little girl you ever saw? I lost sight of her. A lady travelling home that way, from South America, I believe, took charge of her and brought her to England. You know, Jack, I tried to tell her that... Uh, you loved her? 
Oh, but she was in such grief that... It all oozed out of your fingertips and the points of your hair. But, but after all, you know, I might have been rejected and I should have looked a, a silly ass. Well, at any rate, you can sympathise with us. Brass it, not off stage. And Here's enters. the messenger back. Jack, let all of Lord Fancourt and Charlie all hurry across. Left. Grassy three enters with notes, hands it to Jack, and goes up left centre to sideboard, quietly arranges three tumblers, whiskey decanter, and jug of water on tray during next scene. They're coming. By Jove! So they are! You'll stop, Bab. Uh, uh, I, I say, uh, look here. No, you'll do as you are. We won't let you go now we've got you. But look here, Jack, don't play the giddy goat. I have something else to do. What is that? It's, it's something awfully important. Well, what? I'm going to play in some amateur theatricals. What? <laughs> You'll be proud again, won't you, Charlie? <laughs> I've given my word. What are you playing? A, a lady. An <laughs> old lady. And I've never acted in my life before. <laughs> oh, that's his tutor, eh, Charlie? <laughs> And I, I'm going to try on the things before those fellows come. You can try them on here. Where are they? They're in my rooms in a box on the bed, but... Fetch them, Brassett, quick. No, 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 I'll fetch them with a little bag. Bolt's left with the bag. Jack intercepts him and they struggle for the bag. Jack gets it and throws it casually down on the table centre. Van Court picks it up very concerned, takes a step or two down and shakes Bag gently to hear if any bottles are broken, then run ha runs hand underneath to see if they are. Reassured, he puts Bag on chair left of centre table. Neither Jack nor Charlie sees any of Lord Van Court's business with the bag. Jack, during this, gets whiskey water and glasses on the front sideboard, places them on centre table. Charlie comes down right to the centre table. Jack behind centre table, Lord Van Court left of table. Jack pours out two whiskies and hands the decanter to Charlie. <laughs> Babs, you don't sympathise with us a bit. Don't I, though? I only wish I could see my own little girl. Oh, she'll turn up one of these days. Have a drink? No, I've knocked it off. Just a small one. I'm teetotal. Oh, very well. Here you are, Charlie. All right, I'll have it. Ah, I tell you what we'll do. We'll drink her health, or wherever she is. Here's to the future Lady Fancourt Babley. Uh, what did you say her name was? I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> oh, go on with you. Uh, Miss Delahaye. They drink. Re-enter Bassett with dress box, a large cardboard brown box with gilt edges like an exaggerated chocolate box. Your things, my lord. Ah, thank you, Brassett. You're an awfully good chap. I say, Jack, could you lend me half a crown? Uh, Charlie, have you half a crown? Um, no, Jack, I haven't. Brassett! Give me half a crown, will you? Yes, sir. Babs! Here you are. Ah, thanks. Brassett, here you are. Charlie and Jack see half crown given back to ba Brassett and laugh. Brassett, during this, removes bag from chair left of table centre to chair at back and then exits. What have you got there? No, chocolates. Oh, no, chocolates? Let's have a look. No, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try them on after lunch while you're on the garden. You can't do that. We shall want you with us. Try them on now. Won't take long, will it? Uh, barely a minute or two. I've lost a lot of time over these theatricals. But next term, I need to work. He exits. Oh, yes. Here it is. Here's the name. So it is. The Chesney. I wonder if they're in. Here they are. Here they are, and your aunt's not come yet. Good, good gracious, what should we do? We enter Brasset. Go, let them come in. We can explain. Show them in back, Brasset. Brassett opens door, showing in Kitty and Amy, closes door and gets up back centre and then exits. How do you do? So kind of you to come. Oh, we were very pleased to be able to come, weren't we, Amy? Oh, yes. Mr Wycom, are we too early? Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> yes, Mr Wycom, we 
Yes, Mr Chesney, you didn't mention any time. Oh, not at all, not at all. We're delighted. <laughs> She'll be here soon. And this is where you think and study and do all your work and everything. No, oh, yes, we do a lot of that sort of thing here. <laughs> You've jolly quarters here. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you were able to come here today. You're off to Scotland tomorrow and we shall miss you so much. Yes, Uncle always takes us to some dreadfully remote place at this time of year, but we never see a soul and it's so dreary. Well, why does he? I don't know. Oh, it's a shame. Why? Why are you sorry we're going? Sorry? Why? It's put me and Jack into a perfect fever. That's why we're so anxious to see you here today. It's lucky Uncle is the way in town, or I don't think we could have come. Why? I don't know, but he raises such odd objections, and then you know he's so particular about Kitty. Why? He's an heiress, you know, and he's their guardian. Oh. Miss Verdun, have you forgotten that dance the other night? I never shall. No. No! Those stolen moments in the garden by ourselves are the very happiest of all my life, and out there in the moonlight... Oh, moonlight is the true atmosphere for... for sentiment. I wonder how many people have said that. Kitty, I know when you like. I know when you like. You can be an awful plague, but today you are quite cynical. Oh, I know I am. I'm thinking of that man. Of what man? Of my guardian, Mr. Spettigue, who hurries us away from all our best friends directly. We get to know anyone really for fear of. For fear of what? No, oh, I don't know. Well, why does he? Because he's a selfish, wicked old man. Are, are you? Really? So sorry to go away? No, I'm angry. But don't speak about it anymore, or, as Amy says, I shall cry. Dear sweet old lady, your aunt must be, Mr Wycombe. I'm willing to know her. Where is she? Oh, one moment. Uh, Jack? Where's my aunt? What? Oh, 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 well, she's hardly arrived yet. No? Oh. Kitty, Mr. Wycombe's aunt hasn't come yet. Hasn't come? Oh, then we must, we'll run and do some shopping and come back. Shan't be long. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Exit, stage left. Kitty first, then Amy. See that? Off like a shot when they found your aunt wasn't here. Oh, well, it makes an awful difference, doesn't it? Now look here, you cut off to the station and bundle the old girl here in a fly. The old girl? What do you mean? Well, your aunt, and I'll see yeah. after the lunch and keep an eye on Babs. All right. I, I say, Jack, I feel happier since I've seen them, don't you? Yes, be off. Exit Charlie. Enter Lord Van Court in shirt sleeves and waistcoat. I Jack say, Jack, have you got any hairpins? Hairpins? Great Scott, no. Uh, may I send your man for some? Yes, certainly. I say have you got a sixpence? Uh, no, no, afraid not. But then why have you haven't got anything? I say, Brathis, I gave you half a crown just now. You mind making it two shillings and getting me a sixpenny worth of hairpins? Certainly, my lord. You can keep the change. I say, Jack, where Exit are those gals? Passes. Yes, but what the deuce made you jump out like that? They might have seen you. I didn't know they were here. Off stage knock. Look out, there's somebody else. Lord Fancourt bolts and exits. By George! There was a lot of hope in what Kitty said. In another minute, I'd have told her that I... Oh, but never mind. Everything's going on splendidly. Knock repeated. Come in! Enter Sir Fras Francis Chesney. Jack! Dad! My dear boy! Oh, dear old Dad, what brings you here? Wherever have you come from? From town, my lad. To have a chat with you and bring you your check. Thanks, Dad. You're a brick. A bit overbaked, my boy, after all my years in India. A bit crisp, Dad, but a humbug pictorially. Am I? How do you make that out? How old are you? What do you say to fifty? Fifty? One. Who'd believe that? And you, Jack, seem much older than I was at your age. I suppose it's the times. Even the old college shows it. New ivy, new paint. Oh, my mater's an old beauty still, Dad. Mm, I suppose she is, by aid of the gentle artifices of the toilet. We all grow old. My dear old Dad, even you at fifty. 
one. Fifty years ago would have been a stout, white-haired or bald, top-booted, domineering old boy. And instead, here you are, a smart, bang-up-to-date sort of chap one can talk to like a champ. Now, have you done it? How have you done it? Don't know. Do you drink? All I want. Eat well? Never noticed. There you are, see? Consequently, health good, temper perfect. We're going to be great pals, Dad. Here you are, my boy. There's your cheque to go on with. <sighs> Thanks, Dad. I haven't seen half enough of you. I see your hospitality. I hope, Dad. Never mind. Same when I was a lad. I've been done over that wine monstrously. Were you? Never mind. So was I. <laughs> I'm very satisfied with you. It's something to go down from college with a record like yours. I say, my boy, where the deuce did you get these cigars? Those, Dad. Ah, that accounts for the bills. And now, my lad, we must begin to think. Think? Now that I've come to the family title, as you know, I have also, which you don't know, come into the family debts and difficulties. Debt. Which are far more than I expected, with the result that all the money I've been saving for you in India goes to pay them. And in short, Jack, you and I, for the next few years, will be, comparatively speaking, poor men. Poor men? This settles me with old Spettigue. However, I'm in hopes of a small appointment for you in Bengal. We enter Brasset. <sighs> Bengal, what a horrible place. What is it, Brasset? His lordship's hairpins, sir. Confound his hairpins. Brasset exits. The dad will be an odd one. I must get rid of Bab somehow if the dad stays. Stays? Why not? Dad, I have an idea. Couldn't this matter be settled by a wealthy marriage? No. That's the sort of thing I'd rather deprecate. I don't think, Jack, I'd... Listen, listen. My chum, that is Charlie Wykin's aunt, Donna Lucia Davadores, is coming here to lunch today, and she's a widow. A widow? And a millionaire. Millionaire? And a charming woman. No, Jack, I don't think I'd advise you to do a thing of this kind, merely for the sake of money. No, oh, not me, Dad. You! Me? You young rascal! <laughs> no, no. I shall never marry again. Dad, just think it over. Where are your things? At the, at the hotel. Don't be rash. Go and change. Make yourself look as nice as possible. Come back to lunch at one o'clock and, Dad, put a flower in your buttonhole. I say, Dad! I enter Charlie. Oh, Dad. Um, Charlie Wycom. Uh, Charlie, my father. Glad to know you, my boy. Glad to know you. Uh, her nephew. A nice boy. You'll like him. I thought it was a fire brigade. <laughs> now, don't forget. Put a flower in your buttonhole. Takes years off a man a flower in his buttonhole. No, Jack. You come and lunch with me at the mitre. Now, <laughs> don't be rash, Dad. See her first. See her first. Hmm? All right, Jack. I'll have a look at her. I'll have a look at her. He exits. Well, what is it? <gasps> Read that. Important business. Don't expect me for a few days. No! She's not coming! The battery must have got, got wired from Telegram! No use! There's no time! The heck! The girls won't remain without a chaperone! What are we to do? <laughs> Can we ask the, the proctor's wife? Old Mrs. Um. Oh, who'd sit and stare like an owl? Oh, here they are! They're coming! What are there we to do? <laughs> I say, Jack, come look at me! What the deuce is it? By George! Splendid! Oh, Charlie, come here quickly! Do you know what a pious fraud is? A, a pious fraud? First cousin to a miracle. Look! What is it? Babs, this is your aunt. Babs? My aunt? Yeah, it's the only one you've got, so you'll have to make the best of her. I say, look here. Enter Lord Fancourt, dressed as an old lady. 
Splendid. Who's that? Oh, the girls. The girls? Charlie's aunt can't come. Oh, can't she? No, no, I'll go take these things off. Oh, no, they won't stop if you do. Won't stop? What do you mean? You must be Charlie's aunt. Me? No. Brassett enters, left. Show them in, Brassett. Brassett opens the door, enter Kitty and Amy. Ah, you've got back. Brassett so exits. Yes, we've been longer than we intended, but I wanted to get some flowers for Charlie's aunt. Has she come? Yes, has she? I hope she's come. Oh, yes, she's come. Donna Lucia, Miss Spettigue, Miss Verdun. Donna Lucia Davidores, Charlie's aunt. Go on, say something. <coughs> How do you do, my dears? We called upon you before, Donna Lucia, but you hadn't arrived. And we brought you these. Oh, oh, <laughs> thank you. I hope your journey from town hasn't tired you. Oh, no, it was very jolly. Pleasant, I mean. What are you supposed to do with these things? Stick them in your dress! You look Fanny worried, Corbett puts flowers in dress. You look worried, Mr. Wycombe. Are you ill? Uh, no, I'm anxious. Uh, he's, I'm, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a little affected at meeting his aunt today for the first time. Oh, Why the dickens don't you say something? Say. Talk about the weather. Charming weather. Oh yes, delightful. <laughs> Oh, well, yes, it's Charlie. Well, college gents will do anything. Brassett exits. You know, you're placing me in a thoroughly false position. May I arrange these for you, Donna Lucia? After all, we have had some nice weather sometimes in poor old England. Uh, what, what on earth does she mean by that? Why, you're a foreigner. A foreigner? What did you say my name was? Donna Lucia Dalvadores. What, what am I, Irish? No, English. Married a Portuguese abroad. A widow? From Brazil. And a millionaire. But I say, Charlie, have I any children? No, you fool. Well, one ought to know. That's all right. Now I can go ahead. Yes, it is wonderful weather for England. Yes, it is. Yes. Shall I... Shall I... Chap on the cloisters. No, you leave that to me and Charlie. We shall attend to them. Of course, Oxford is all very new to you, Donna Lucia, but it's a dear old place in any weather. Amy and I will show you all about. I shall be delighted. You're staying till tomorrow, are you not? Am I staying till tomorrow? No. No. Oh. Oh, but you will. You must. Mustn't you, Kitty? Uh, I, I'm afraid Auntie can't stay after today. <laughs> no, you see, it's my washing day. Uh, yes, she has so much business to attend to here. In, in, in town. Yes, lawyers, stocks. Yes, yeah. lawyers and stocks, stocks, all very important, you know. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've so long to know my dear. Oh, Mr. Wycombe has told us so much about you, but this made us quite love you. Has he, my dear? And he's so grateful. He says he owes everything to you and could never repay you. And, oh, he's such a good, frank, upright man. It was so noble of you. Of course, my dear. It was my only duty to see after the welfare of my poor brothers. Sisters, you fool. Sisters, you fool. Sisters and brother-in-law's orphan girl. Boy, 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 boy. I'll see <laughs> twins in a minute. Yes, yeah, it's below table, back to the audience, has during the scene been laying luncheon, now exits. But it was so good of you to find out. You were so far away in a foreign land, and he might have been left to starve, or to fall into the cruel hands. But you had a good, kind, affectionate nature. Oh, have I, my dear? Anyone can see it in your face. No! I feel I could sell my whole heart to you. Don't let her. 
I'm not going to. The dear little thing. You don't mind my talking to you like this, do you? My dear, you are a very charming little girl of whom I am sure I could grow very fond. You must tell me all you like someday when you know me better. How the devil is that? Oh, I feel like I've known you for years and years already. But jealous. I'm very sorry, but it was very nice. Enter Brassett, left, hurriedly to left centre. Mr Chesney! Mr Chesney! I, I beg pardon, sir, but I heard Mr Spettigue inquiring at the gate for your room, sir. Oh dear, my uncle back! M Mr Spettigue! Uh, Mr Spettigue back! I thought he was in London. Mr Chesney, I beg of you to send him away! Not left, unasked his door. Uh, what do I say? What am I to do? Stay where you are, perhaps. Can you look only get rid of him? Charlie what? exits quickly through the curtains into recess. <clears throat> Stephen Spettigue enters, angrily, with hat on, left, crossing to Lord Vancourt. Why doesn't somebody answer this door? What do you want? I wish to see Mr Chesney. Where did you get that hat? Take it off, sir. Sit down, sir. I'm not sitting down. I didn't ask you to sit down. We'll waive that for the present, madam. I wish to see Mr Chesney at once. Well, you can't see him. He is not present. I am the only person present. But the porter told me that two young ladies, my niece and my ward, were here. I tell you, I am the only young lady present. He <coughs> saw them come in. And didn't he tell you he saw them go out? No! Very well then, what more do you want? We've gone into the garden. They have nothing of the kind. Then they've gone into the town. Oh. And now, sir, having got all of the information you are likely to get in your present condition... Madam! Distressful! Where have you been? What do you mean, madam? I am annoyed, but perfectly sober. Well, you don't look it. Other people can be annoyed as well as yourself. Madam, I apologise. Good morning. Did you see anything strike that hat? I beg your pardon? Did you see anything strike that hat? He wants me to do it again. Spetagy puts on hat and exit angrily, going oh, up right to recess. Yes. Re enter Kitty and Amy. It was sweet of you, <laughs> you darling. Look at him, Jack. I'll oh, punch his head if he does it again. Knock, brass it enters left. Ah, here's my father, Donna Lucio. Lord Fancourt comes down to join. Take care, this is my father. Uh, look here, am I any relation to him? No, you're Charlie's aunt from Brazil. Brazil? Where's that? You know, where the nuts come from. Enter Sir Francis Chesney. Uh, this Verdun, my father. Delighted. Miss Spettigue, my father. Charmed. Thank you. Now, Jack, has she come? Oh, yes, uh, she's come. Go on, Charlie. Introduce your aunt. Uh, uh, Donna Lucy Adalvadores, Sir Francis Chesney, Jack's father. How do you do, Sir Francis? How, how, how do you do? I'm Charlie's aunt from Brazil, where the nuts come from. I say, Jack. Yes? Oh, sorry, that was... I say, Jack. Yes? Is that the lady? Huh? 
Yes. Oh, my George. Oh, don't go, Dad. Go on. Charlie's told you all about him. Charlie has told me, told you all about him. No, 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 no. My nephew Charles. My nephew Charles has told me so much about you. In his letters. In his letter. In his letters. Why isn't it? No, it isn't. Don't do it yourself. I'm much obliged to you, Mr. Wycombe, but I only met him today for the first time. See? Yes, but, Dad, I've been simply photographing you to Charlie for years. Oh, yes, he's a splendid photographer. Remember, you've only just come to England and you've never seen Charlie till today. Why the deuce didn't you say so before? We enter Brasset. Jack! My dear boy, it's impossible. What, Dad? Well, look at her. Huh? Oh, good gracious. Luncheon is ready, sir. Uh, take my father and be careful how you talk to him. Dad, will you take Donna Lucia? Allow me, Donna Lucia. Well, Bangkok rises, takes Sir Francis's arm, and they move up to the table. He'll sit beside me, won't you, Sir Francis? I shall be delighted. You all the way from London only this morning. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh. oh, yes, I've been a great traveller, Sir Francis. I came all the way from London only this morning. Charlie's serving mayonnaise. Uh, Donna Lucia, aunt, aunt, mayonnaise. Thank you. Uh, uh, Miss Fettigue, please. Uh, Miss Verdon, please. Oh, what a pretty flower. You like it? Will you accept it? Oh, thank you. Thanks for the stuff. Thanks. Jack, mayonnaise. Open the wine, Brassett. Uh, very pleasant rooms here, Mr. Chesney. Brassett pours into Sir Francis's glass and returns to sideboard for most result. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they're awfully nice rooms, Mr. Chesney, I'm sure. Don't you think so, Sir Francis? Pleasanter today than usual, I fancy. Donna Lucia, may I have the pleasure? Sips wine, but puts glass down in disgust. Jack, my boy, where did you get this stuff? May I just have a little water, please? Open the champagne, cross it. I, uh, I can't find it, sir. Can't find it? Do you know where it is, Charlie? Uh, no. What's become of it? I thought it was in ice. What is it? What do you want? The champagne, Donna Lucia. What? Haven't you got any? Well, I thought you'd forget something, so I brought some with me in my bag. In my bag, Brassett. Jack punches Lord Franco. Brassett takes bag off chair and goes to sideboard and takes out the champagne. And to you in a rage with hat on. Ah! ah, so I was right after all, and that old fool of a woman told me they were not here. Oh, uh, Mr. Spettigue. Don't address me, sir. This is the way you take advantage of my absence, girls. Mr. Spettigue. Don't address me, sir. I have no wish to hold any converse with you. But won't you allow us to explain? My business is with this young man, sir, and not with you. But you won't listen to either of them. Go away, madam, and don't interfere. Where did you get that hat? Take it off, sir. Spetty, you take some hat, totally. You forget yourself, sir. Perhaps you will remember, sir, that ladies are present. I disapprove of their presence, and I wish to request them to return with me. We can discuss this matter on a more fitting occasion. Certainly, a most excellent suggestion. Let him call again. You're a very foolish old woman, and I must beg of you not to interfere. Ladies, come. Kitty and Amy move forward reluctantly, but Lord Fancourt puts out his arms to bar the way, and they each take his arm instead. Sir, you cannot put such an affront on Mr. Wycombe's friends. I don't know them. I don't know them. 
Introduce me, Mr. Whitehill. Okay, well, uh, uh, Mr. Spethagew. Uh, Sir Francis Chesney. Spethagew barely acknowledges introduction. Mr. Chesney is my son, sir. Um, this lady is... Pray don't introduce him to me. I've been sufficiently insulted by the old bower gentleman already. I consult my own feelings when I say that I am deeply annoyed to find on prematurely returning from town my niece and my ward lunching without my permission with these two young gentlemen. To meet Mr. Wycombe's aunt. Indeed, I do not. There is no indeed about it, sir. I repeat, to meet Mr. Wycombe's aunt. In my mind, it matters little. In my mind, it matters everything. Therefore, it's your name. allow me to introduce you. Donna Lucia Dalvadores, the, what's his confounded name, Jack? Spettingu, no, d d d what? Donna Lucia? Mr. Spettingu. The celebrated millionaire. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I'm Charlie's aunt from Brazil, where the nuts come from. Jack, push it. Bancourt, who falls against Spethagu. Lord Bancourt tries to turn the fall into an awkward curtsy, then turns furiously to Jack. I have been indiscreet. Oh, I am sorry, very, very sorry. Charlie goes, oh, go on. He's apologised. Ask him for lunch. Well, I thought you were very rude, but if you apologise, you know. Oh, by all means. I am sorry. I am very sorry. You'll stay to lunch. Won't you? Brassett takes hat and stick for Spetigu. If you wish it, am I forgiven? Forgiven? Here, accept this as a peace offering. Put Sir Francis' flower into Spetigu's coat. My flower! Put my coat in Spetigu. Allow me, Don No, allow me. Offers his right arm. Lord Fancourt hesitates, flutters eyelashes at them both, and chooses Spettigue's arm. Spettigue offers to take chair from Sir Francis between the two, the chair is drawn back, and Lord Fancourt sits on the floor. The others rise with screams and exclamations, tableau and curtain. End of Act One. <laughs>